Humrin Khalili, uh, great to be with you here in, the, in our studio. Uh, tell us, you were born in Iran. Uh, tell us a bit about your journey, how you got to the U.S. Yeah, so my mom escaped Iran with one suitcase, $5,000, three-year-old boy in 1978, about six months before the revolution started in Iran. We were adopted by a church in California called the First Presbyterian Church of San Mateo. Uh, they opened their arms to us at the time we were, you know, two Muslims from Iran. And through a series of um, amazing miracles, uh, Jesus just kept revealing himself to us. And I just want you to know, God's hand was on us from the moment we left Iran to the moment we arrived here. As a result of those miracles, my mom said, um, Jesus is real, we want to be Christians. And that was uh, because of the influence of the church. People reached out to you? Yeah, you know, they were, it really happened because people were so welcoming. Mm -hmm. They welcomed us with open arms, they taught us about the Bible, they told us who Jesus was, and they presented everything with just such love and care and warmth. We weren't browbeaten to death. Mm -hmm. We were presented, and there was constant prayers over us, always. I mean, you know, at the time we were illegal aliens. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, it seemed like everybody was rooting for us, all 1,000 members uh, of that Presbyterian church. Yeah. Uh, fast forward, you grew up in the San Francisco area, uh, went to school, and then you became a film critic and a movie maker. That's correct. Yeah, I ended up working in radio um, at a station called Alice at 97.3 mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And uh, on that uh, station, I was movie critic. I was a red carpet interviewer. I did the man on the street bits. I screened the phone calls. I mean, I did, and you know, in radio, you got to do it all. Mm -hmm. You got to do everything. And then you made a movie. Tell us about the movie, which is uh, pretty unique. Yeah, I shot the first full-length feature film entirely on a cell phone. Uh, it qualified for the Academy Awards uh, in 2012. It's Jenna Rowland's last movie. And uh, Dolly Parton saw it in 2013 um, and said she loved it. She said, Hooman, your movie makes me want to go out and help people. Mm -hmm. So she wrote the music for it. Um, I released it and then I took it back and I'm reworking it and my hope is to revamp it uh, in a way where I can show the movie, uh, add some footage and help fight anti-Semitism. Mm. Why so? What, 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 you have a passion about fighting anti-Semitism? I think right now there's so much division in the United States. I think, I think there's, and everybody's looking for something to be angry about. We're not the way we were when I was a kid, where you were trying to find commonality with your neighbor. It seems like every little thing triggers everyone. Um, I pray a lot and uh, I, I lay all my movie ideas before God. And I really feel like this idea is, um, is from the Lord. So right now I'm looking for a world-class screenwriter. Mm. <laughs> Are you concerned about the, the rise of anti-Semitism? I am, yeah, yeah. Right now there's... Uh, and do you see that ha happening in the U.S.? I do see it happening in the U.S., sure, absolutely. I mean, uh, social media is a, is a double-edged sword, and uh, whatever you seem to care about is what you're posting about. And, you know, I have a lot of Jewish friends, and I, I'm seeing how much they're posting about the anti-Semitism in the world. Obviously, most notably is, is Kanye West. And, mm -hmm. and, and, but around that, uh, you know, it's, it's a good and bad thing because the awareness just goes through the roof. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a real concern. I mean, obviously right now, because I was born in Iran, my heart is with the Persian people and all they're dealing with. But you know, you, you are glancing over to all the hate throughout the world. You're looking at Ukraine a little bit. You're looking at anti-Semitism a lot. So there's a lot on the plate to deal with. You're here on a special mission. Uh, tell us about why you're here in Jerusalem. The Western media isn't covering what's happening in Iran, these protests that have been going for 100 days plus. Uh, and uh, there's a woman down in L.A., her name is Chloe. She has an organization called Mur Murals for Freedom. And then somebody connected us, and she said, look, even if the Western media doesn't cover us, let's make the world look. Let's try to find as many walls as we can and paint a mural uh, saying the words, woman, life, freedom. This is the slogan for the people of Iran right now. Uh, ever since uh, Mahsa Amini was mm -hmm. killed because a little bit of her hair was hanging out of her hijab. So uh, through a series of connections, got in touch with the art commissioner of San Francisco, found a wall in San Francisco, 
the artist painted, I took a picture, put it on Instagram, and then there was a reporter in uh, Tel Aviv, Emily Schrader, uh, her Instagram is Emily in Tel Aviv, connects me with the vice mayor of Jerusalem, a woman named Fleur Hassan. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing led to another, she said, I want a mural here. I said, what do we do? She said, jump on a plane. Three days later, I was on a plane, came to Jerusalem, found an artist through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, I designed what I wanted. The artist added, her name is Anna Kogan. She added her flair to it. And by the grace of God, 26 days later, uh, this mural is now hanging in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, sh supporting the, the people of Iran. Mm. Yeah. And, and how important is it now to be standing with these people? I mean, it's everything. It really is. Uh, one thing that the Persian people are saying over and over, especially the Persians in Iran, saying, be our voice, be our voice. In other words, the world is not giving us the media attention. You have to be our voice. And right now you're seeing something. The people of Israel are standing with the people of Iran, and they're showing it over and over again. And uh, one thing Floor said to me, the vice mayor said, we want the world to see that the Jews care about the Persians. We want the world to see that. So this mural is, is not the first, but it's a prominent sign saying, look, we're, we're displaying four of the women that were murdered and we're, we're, we're standing with you in your slogan. And I want the, the eyes of the world to see that the Jews and the Persians are standing together here right now in this moment. Mm. Tell us about the relationship between the Jews and the Persians. It goes back centuries, if not thousands of years. Yeah, that's right. So if you look at the book of Esther in the Bible, uh, it's very prominent there. Um, you know, there was uh, a time where, you know, the, the Jews said, we want to rebuild. And the Persian under uh, a, a guy named Cyrus said, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I give you my blessing. I want you to rebuild your home. And so uh, there was an article written recently saying, uh, I want to remind every person reading this that the Jews and the Persians have been friends longer than they've been enemies. And uh, that's important for people to understand. Right now, that Islamic regime is so full of hate, so full of anger. Um, you can just tell by the way they treat their own people. The, the 600 people that have been murdered, 70 of which are children. Um, so the whole point of this is to say, what's going on here? Why can't we be friends again? The ultimate goal is for Iran and Israel to be friends once more, like they used to be. Mm. A lot of people have compared the Abraham Accords, where many uh, as Sunni Arab nations have, you know, had a, now a new relationship with Israel, and some people have hoped and prayed for a Cyrus Accords, that Israel and uh, uh, Persia can once again. You know, I'm really glad you brought that up. Uh, one thing that, you know, a lot of people don't realize is there are 250,000 Persian Jews in the world. Like, we're, our, our cultures, our countries are, are, un, are combined. They're, they're interwoven in a way that uh, people just aren't aware. So I would love to see that Cyrus Accord come to pass. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's a lot of work to do. First, we have to get rid of the Islamic regime. Mm -hmm. that, and by the way, everything that I'm doing is because of all of the prayers of all of the people for the last 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years you know, the fruit is now being born. And um, the prayer right now is that the people of Iran keep protesting. Everyone says 110 days, it's not gonna last. Let's see where we are 210 days from now, 500 days from now. God willing, by the middle of this year, there will be a huge shift. And what you just spoke about, the Cyrus Accord will come to pass. Mm. Well, that would be a dream for many people here in Israel that have been looking at Iran as a mortal enemy with its uh, Iranian nuclear program. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, it's a great thing that the people of Israel are distinguishing the people of Iran from the government of Iran. Mm -hmm. And that's what the whole world needs to do. You know, there's 73 million people in Iran. Don't look at the people of Iran the same as the government of Iran. They're completely different entities. The people of Iran are kind, they're warm, they're welcoming, and on top of that, they want their basic human rights. Yeah. So 
on this station, if I could just say, pray for the people of Iran. Please keep them in your prayers every morning, every night. Yeah. How can people be praying for them? So there, um, there, there are a few ways. Pray that they have the resolve to continue fighting. Pray for a miracle to happen with the uh, Islamic Guard and the mullahs to have a change of heart. Pray that there's a regime change, like the regime that's there now is gone forever. And pray for the organizations that are supporting Iran. Uh, there's one in particular called Transform Iran. And what's happening right now is the protesters who are hurt during um, a protest, uh, the law is that the hospitals can't help them. And so Transform Iran has underground doctors that go from house to house at night, bandaging up the protesters. Uh, most recently, a couple months ago, they had a, a woman doctor. Uh, she got caught by the guards and they broke her hands and feet. Organizations like Transform Iran and, and any organization that's willing to, to have people in the country um, are, the, are the people you should be looking at, uh, supporting and praying for. Yeah. Woman, would you lead us in prayer right now? For Absolutely. People that run? Thank you. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, thank you for dying for us on the cross. Thank you for bleeding for our sins. Thank you for redeeming us. Jesus, um, thank you for this moment. Thank you for the miracle of bringing me here to Jerusalem. Thank you for the openness and the, the kind, warm heart and hands of the Israeli people welcoming me and allowing this banner to be hung in Telpiot, Jerusalem. Jesus, bless this mural. Um, send kisses from heaven to it. Let the eyes of the world look upon it. And let this be the first of many murals throughout the country of Israel, the first of 40. And God, we lift up the people of Iran. Mm -hmm. Jesus, sustain them. Keep them safe. Hold them in the palm of your hand. Give them courage. Um, and come to them in their dreams, Jesus. Let them know that you exist. May Iran uh, no longer be, what is it, 5% Christian. Let it be 55% Christian. Let it be 75% Christian. May the people of Iran bend the knee to Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Human, great to be with you. Thank here. you so much.